Good, I'd like to welcome you to our Financial Astrology 101, where we'll be discussing some of the principles of investing and trading using astrology. There are many definitions of astrology, but the one, the operative one I like to use is, is a mathematical psychology based on astronomy. Markets are partially, not fully, but partially knowable by fund fundamentals, technicals, and behavioral finance, which is also known as astrology. And of course, astrology has over a 5,000 year old record of economic forecasting. And in the old days, it was for things like uh, when the Nile would be flooded, which was very important for agricultural astrology. And of course, uh, a lot to deal with kings when they would become coronated, when they'd be assassinated, when there'd be wars. Okay. Whoop, why is this not moving? I don't know, something's... Okay, let's try this again. Beginning. Ah, okay, a little disclaimer, because I may be giving forecasts on stocks, and needless to say, if I do say anything, you have... it's. Uh, be very careful, use your own due diligence or use the work of a professional. Since I have been a professional, uh, both an RAA, a CTA, a hedge fund, et cetera. So anything we'll be talking about market information, again, be careful with this and let this only be one source of information, or well, albeit perhaps an excellent one. So the goal today, twofold. The first is to increase your understanding of financial astrology principles. And the second is to be potentially profitable for you as investors and or traders. The question policy has already been mentioned. If you don't understand something important, I'm saying as it goes or requires clarification, ask now in the chat box. All other questions, of course, we would prefer for at the end, whether they be on astrology or my views of the stock or commodity markets afterwards. Since we're recording this, uh, obviously you can review it. And you don't need to take notes, therefore. Two phrases I would like to disagree with first. One is the a famous quote by John Kenneth Galbraith that the only function of economic forecasting is to make astrology look respectable. Uh, to me, economic forecasting is like weather forecasting. They should keep giving them more money, uh, for, not necessarily for being right, but to try to get more right. So that's a sort of a cheeky statement. But the other one is one that's used by many people, and it's not true, which is that millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires do. And it was attributed, so-called, so to J.P. Morgan. And of course, the problem is there were no billionaires in the 1920s. In fact, he was only worth about $118 million, equivalent to $50 billion in today's market. However, it is true that J.P. Morgan did use astrology, at uh, Evangeline Adams, who was a very famous astrologer in the 1920s. If you go to the Morgan Library in New York, you'll see that there's some very good books on astrology. And even Evangeline Adams predicted the uh, 1929 crash by looking at his horoscope. Uh, not J.P. Morgan's horoscope, his son's horoscope. So there's a lot of very interesting information there. But it, what it means, of course, is that people who have a lot of money tend to be more independent and don't follow... Uh, comments that like astrology is nonsense without having studied it. When I give a quiz, and we don't need to do it here because we have a special audience, I tend to ask three questions. The first question is how many people in the audience believe in astrology? And for a lecture like this, we'd probably get about two thirds. I suspect if we raised the hands, probably everybody here would do it. Then I go and ask a second question. Whoop. How many people in astrology know it works? Not belief, know it works. And about a third of the people would raise their hand, and I would be one of them. Then we get to the third question. How many people in the audience knew about the 1987 crash a year in advance to the day? And surprise, surprise, there's only one hand that goes up, which is mine. Now, that work, incidentally, was not mine. It was the work of Charles Harvey, who was a very famous 
uh, British astrologer at the time, and other astrologers did it. Uh, some did it like six months in advance, but Charles is the one that got me involved. And one of the reasons I'm a financial astrologer at the time, I had, had a bookstore, a publishing company, a school, and a computer store. And I happened to, I thought it was very interesting that the crash was known. And I was reading an article about Andy Krieger, who had made $600 million for his bank. And he was given a reward of $6 million, 1%. He was very upset. Anyway, I'm in the middle of reading this. And I said, wait a second, I'm an astrologer. I make predictions all the time for people. I've been doing it uh, almost 20 years. I said, you know what, I'll do it. And it was just a thought that came to me. I spent the next two years studying financial astrology. I was very fortunate that I had a mentor at Payne Weber and Merrill Lynch. And the only reason I had them at the world headquarters was that his wife was a healer. And when he saw the name of one of my companies, Astrology Services International, which was ASI Computers, and we did things like the Federal Reserve Bank and the New York City Board of Education, ATT, he came to us because we were a small company at the time of only a few million dollars, and he taught me a lot. Then I had the issue of how am I going to establish my reputation? People like Arch Crawford, Charles Harvey had all uh, predicted the 87 crash, so I couldn't do that. But at the time, everyone was losing their short, shirt, shorting the Japanese market. So I went and did a tremendous amount of work, predicted in advance about two years. Turned out I was off a few days. And then I sent it out to a, about 100 press organizations when it took place. And there were some other forecasts there too, like the next recession, et cetera. And when I, it occurred, Barron's had kept it on file, did a story on me and said, this person called it, and then we were off to the races. That's sort of how we got involved in financial astrology. Now, this is the most important slide. I'm going to leave it up here for a while because this is really everything you need to know from principles viewpoint, 100%. So I'm going to go over it in some detail. This is the key slide. And there are many others, of course. First of all, financial astrology is a dual specialty. To be successful, truly successful, you need to know both finance and astrology. If I were going to do medical astrology, which I can't do, you have to know some principles of health and medicine. If I were going to do astrometeorology, I need to know something as well. Right after the crash, many, many astrologers were trying to predict the markets because several people had done it successfully. I, was, I partaked in a network called FNN, Financial News Network. It was about 25, maybe 20 financial astrologers. But by a year's time, they stopped because they were not that accurate, because the majority of people were like what you hear on TV. One person says the market's up, the next person says it's down, the next person says it's sideways. And that was because most of these people were not trained in finance. They were simply trained in astrology, which is a very important tool, of course, but not sufficient. The second, extremely important, financial astrology is not a perfect tool. It's a goal we have. Charles Harvey used to say, if astrology was a perfect tool, then all financial astrologers would be rich. They'd own Rolls Royces, private jet planes, and yachts. How many of you know that many super rich billionaire astrologers? Okay, it is not a perfect tool. It's an excellent tool. And we'll talk about it being the second best market forecasting tool, but it is not a perfect tool. Point number three, forecasting involves pattern analysis. This is true not only for astrology, it's true if I'm, if I'm, a, I'm a miner going for gold mines. There are certain patterns that repeat. And when you're a student, for example, you would study the 1929 crash and the 1987 crash and, and so forth. And we see what they have in common so that the next time we see a similar planetary pattern, we can assume something similar that rhymes, but not necessarily identical. But it is pattern analysis, which is true for most forecasting. Point number four, there are two basic approaches to financial astrology, depending whether, in most cases, one, whether someone started as a an astrologer and became a financial astrologer, or whether someone was a market professional and then became a financial astrologer. Most of the people who are publicly known were 
technical analysts or market professionals who then use planetary cycles and correlate them to stock market cycles. But since I was a professional astrologer first, I did genealogical charts. So I would do the horoscope of the Dow Jones. I do the horoscope of Germany. I do the horoscope of China. I would do the horoscope of IBM. I would do the horoscope of gold, et cetera. So I tend to do that less of cyclical work. Both are valid approaches. Both are dual specialty, but there are two different ways that people approach it. So if you have a skill set as and can do good natal astrology, then you can apply these to companies. If you're good at cycle analysis, then of course you can do that. The way I approach investing is I try to use the intersection of fundamentals and astrology. And when I'm trading, I do technicals and astrology. Now, of course, if you can get fundamentals, technicals, and astrology all together, that's wonderful. There's this saying that we used to teach that one didn't indication is a possibility, two it is a probability, and three is a certainty. And if you can get all three to line up, it's a slam dunk, but it's a rare event. Okay, so just want to just leave this again, because this is really most important. It's a dual specialty. You have to understand finance as well, and I'll give some examples of why you must. It's not a perfect tool, second best tool out there. It involves pattern analysis. You can approach it from cycles or from individual horoscopes or both. And if you're doing investing, then the majority of your work should be fundamentals and astrology. If you're trading, technicals and astrology. If you were taking a class in standard uh, fundamental analysis, they would do something like the following. Uh, there are multiple ways to predict market performance, momentum, mean reversion, Martingale's search for value. And if you look at the bottom, that they're not perfect tools, but in the short term, momentum has value, and there's a reversion to the mean. This is sort of very common, and of course, it, it's much more elaborate than this. But in my opinion, there's a fifth way to predict market performance. And again, that financial astrology is the second best way. Usually people want to know what the third best way is. And that, of course, is money flows, algos, and AI. AI being relatively new, down the road it may increase. But basically money flows means basically how people have bet. They're, it doesn't matter if you're bullish or bearish. It matters whether you're buying or selling your stock. So you can be, for example, very bearish, but you're holding on to your stock. Or you can be very bullish and you're selling your stock. It's money flows, algos, which are computer generated, and now we're getting to more sophistication with AI. Now, unlike personal counseling, where your primary goal is to help clients live a more conscious, meaningful, and fulfilling life, the goal of financial astrology is simply to make more money with less risk. When I tell that to people, and when I used to be a fund manager, they just love it. That's the golden grail. Make more money with less risk. So we want to talk about three common mistakes. The first is using bad data. One of the big problems is if you have wrong information, I remember in the old days before computers, we would see the, multi the majority of charts had at least one error in them. And as when I used to teach it, I had my students recalculate all my charts and they would, and of course now with computers, this is a, a dream that you don't have to do this anymore. But if, but if your data is bad in computer language, we say garbage in, garbage out. And I'll give an example of this recently. Unfortunately, there was a tragedy October 7th in Israel. So I took a look at the Israel horoscope that I just picked up and I couldn't see it. I said, wait a second, how could with the equivalent of 911 not show up in the Israeli horoscope. I'm too much of an astrologer to say that's not possible. So I went and did a little research and realized that what we had on file was the wrong chart, looked it up in a mundane book. I simply inserted it. It showed up in a major way. And of course, one of the things you do, both when I used to counsel people, is we first take events in their life and make sure that it would show up in the horoscope or do preliminary rectification. It's the same thing in uh, financial astrology. You've got to test the data in the past and see, does it work in the future? Okay, that's mistake number one. Mistake number two, which is not 
people don't get this, is to treat the US markets pre and post 1971 and 1987 the same. Let me explain why. People, when I first say this, if they're sophisticated, think, oh, 1971, that's when the US won off the gold standard. Yes, and that had value. That's not my point. What happened in 1971 was, this is when the era of fixed options. What does that mean? Previous to 1971, if you were bearish about the markets, you sold your stock. After 1971, many people did not sell their stock, but bought puts, which meant also that the market makers would sell them the puts and push up the market. So there was less selling in the market and there was counter forces. So the market started to operate differently to the same planetary influences. 1987 crash, we had the working group of financial markets, AKA plunge protection scheme. You had limits in the market, so you couldn't drop 20% in a day, which has done, used to happen in certain markets. It would be stopped at a certain point, And shall we say it was supported more and more. So markets changed their character and would respond differently to the same influence. Number three, it is different this time. As we are talking in the 21st century, the role humans play has diminished greatly. I used to be when I would watch the floor in Chicago and New York and you see the traders going back and forth, you could measure it almost with lunar cycles, how what would went on. But today you have computers, it's run by computers, algorithms and passive managers. So there's a different results because astrology does measure the emotional responses, but computers are not emotional. That changes the character of what's happening. Other ways things are different than they used to be. There's less and less reality in the market. You used to be saying that the markets would forecast six months in advance. That's not true. It never was really true. But some of you may remember when we had negative bond yields where the government would pay you to get bonds or negative oil prices. I think it went down to minus $35, which means the government, you'd be paid $35. I wish I had the money, but you needed to buy, you need multi-million dollars and tankers to do this. That's total bananas. You also have, unlike the past, the influence of retail investors. It used to be less than 10%, was all done by market professionals. Now you have social media, trading applications, and meme stock investing. You have index investing so that many bad stocks will be sold, excuse me, will be bought when they shouldn't be, and that good stocks will be sold when they should because of index and ETF investing. And that again has changed the nature of it because you can play the whole broad market, you can play ETFs, or you can play individual stocks or commodities. And of course, computer trading domination and in volatile markets, 90% is done by computers and the faster time frames. In the old days, when I started, let's say there was some good news in a stock like IBM and you had a forecast that would go up 20%, it would take three to six months to get there. Today, it could be three to six days or two weeks because everybody's computer has the same technical target and it jumps there. And then you have to make a new decision. So you have a much faster trading time philosophy, and that requires you, if you're trading professionally, not only to call what happens, but how to deal with it. Now, just this year alone, there's been many changes. First is break the rules. Many of you know about the Swiss banks that were taken out, and for the first time in history, the Swiss favored shareholders over bondholders. The whole reason people become a bondholder is for safety and security. They accept less returns for safety, for this situation. This would never happen before in history. Everywhere else in Europe denied it because it, otherwise nobody would buy bonds. But it was an, an outrageous thing. What happened in 2003 with the bank failures? Everybody was insured. You were supposed to be only insured to $250,000. $250, Again, the rules changed. And one of the reasons our forecasts were slightly wrong or, or wrong, depending how you want to look at it, or right last year, which we'll discuss, is because they changed that rule. Our timing was right, our events were right, 
but they changed the rules. And finally, and this is just beginning, the role of AI. So time and price. Everyone who's a technical trader says you can choose one. Do you want time? Do you want price? Occasionally you get both, but not often. And I'll give two examples. The first is our first Gulf War. We predicted it two years in advance. We were off four hours. At the time, and we were right about our other forecast, by the way, at the time. But at the time, everybody who thought the war was going to happen basically was shorting the market. Everybody who said the war wasn't going to happen basically bought the market. What happened? The war happened, but they decided it was an easy war overnight. And so the market went up, even though the even though we were correct. Now, we happened to play volatility for the, those of you that are sophisticated. I didn't know that, but my trader knew it, so we broke even. But the point was, it wasn't the market reaction. We're going to talk about my two major forecasts uh, that you may have listened to. Uh, not the ones in 224, but for last year. And you'll see what we did there. Same sort of situation. Next, you have to know your edge. You're playing, if you're trading, against Goldman Sachs, 24 hours, 90 PhDs, billions of dollars, supercomputers, and you think it's a level trading field? Now, you do have an edge, which is astrology, and we suggest if you're investors, you, you combine it with Peter Lynch's principle, no, invest in what you know and love. And that's, what's your edge? If you're trading, you need an edge. If you're investing, you, you don't need as much of an edge, but in trading, you certainly do. And of course, what charts do you use? If you're doing individual stocks, you look at the incorporation chart and the first trading chart, which is somewhat similar to trading and technicals. And of course, you can look at the president's chart as well. But there are times when the president could do very badly and the company would do well. If you have a bad president and he's being fired, for example, that's a good event. So we have to be a little tricky. But in general, we look at the incorporation chart more or less to reflect fundamentals. This is not absolute, of course. And first trading for technicals. And then we have what's called the lock theory of prediction. Uh, most of you don't, probably don't know how to uh, pick a lock. Um, I haven't done it. But in the old days, and I don't think this is how it works anymore, there was a series of cylinders that you click. So you go one click, one click, one click. So what you do in, in astrology, it's the same thing. You take a big overall cycle, click one, a, sec a lower cycle, another click, Another click down until you eventually get down to the ascendant. So when all the clicks are done, the event takes place. It's a lot of work. We tend to not do this as much. But basically, it's a top-down approach. Although one can be bottoms up as well. But we're, we're going to be talking just about this here. This is the question people always ask. Is this a good time to invest in stock markets? Well, today I don't think is. And we're going on yellow alert for the next two weeks. Markers are at record levels, but we'll go into that perhaps if there's time in enough detail. But this is the main question people want to know. And maybe they're going to invest in stocks. Maybe they're going to invest in ETFs. Maybe they're going to invest in the market. So let's talk a little astrology, just a little bit here, because we're talking principles. This is something we wrote about 30 years ago. And we're dealing with the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, which is a 20-year cycle, as we all know. And this was the basically the planetary these were the planets that would rule the business cycle. We had around 2000, the Jupiter conjunction. Oh, excuse me, that's today, zero Aquarius. If we talk about the 2000 forecast one, the forecast was, of course, the world is becoming more global and telecommunications will be increasingly important. Obviously, in retrospect, in, in advance, was 100% true. When we talk about the great conjunction now in zero Aquarius, our forecast was for deglobalization, decentralization, connectedness, IoT, space exploration, robotics, AI, and so forth. And of course, that's sort of what's going on in the world at the moment. That's the big cycle that's around for the next 20 years. And for those of you who use saved me in symbols, uh, the first degree of Aquarius is an old Adobe mission. And that means that you try to get a safe and comfortable place to live, work, and pray, and to create, if you look at the bottom, infrastructures to pursue your beliefs. Okay. And of course, you're all familiar with Aquarius. Uh, and of course, some of the 
what's going on in the world is very Aquarian. I think you all know this, so we don't need to do this, or you can look at it later. Okay, mundane astrology. If we look at last year, there were four elements we've looked at. Again, you can review it. The first is the U.S. Pluto return, which has been going on for a number of years. We'll go on to 2025, 20, 26, which is almost our civil war that we're seeing, unfortunately, and a lack of civil civility. Last year, there were two major transits, eclipses that we were interested in, and eclipses don't happen that day, although sometimes they do. Usually it's a month or a couple of months, depending whether it's a solar or a lunar eclipse and what else is going on. This is a, so the, the, the Guru Chanda transit is something that comes from Hindu astrology. I'll just mention it briefly. And of course, we were looking at our president's horoscope last year that it would be extremely difficult for him. And it, this continues. And of course, you see his popularity going down. And that affects what's going on in the world, both mundane and because geopolitics obviously affects financial markets. Okay. Um, so if we looked at the two things, the Pluto Aquarius, we're all familiar with that means. And then we were talking about the solar, what's coming up. And this is coming up in April, a little bit later, which is why we're changing our views uh, in second quarter from first quarter. And you can listen to that if you haven't uh, on my 2024 report. And we're also doing an update March 21st, um, depending on what happens. We're going to be doing another webinar, which we'll be posting if you can't catch it live. Guruk Chandler Yoga is something that I was not totally familiar with, but I was asked, one of my teachers was Dr. Raman in India, and periodically I'm asked by the Indian magazine to do something. This was a very famous transit. Uh, I hadn't studied it. I went to a friend of mine who's a good Vedic astrologer. He did a quick test on it. And one of the things, if you look at the bottom, the two critical things which we have talked about was similar to a 9-11 terrorist attack and 1920 non-stock market crash. Well, if you think about what happened with the finances, with the banks, if the government hadn't come in, changed the rules and protected people, whether they were insured or not, you know what would have happened to the market. And likewise, fortunately, I mean, the horrible situation, which was basically the 911 terror attack for Israel. But it, if you even want to be very crass and just talking about what it has done and is doing to the oil markets uh, was a short downward trend. But it was an absolute... Perfect call from an astrological viewpoint, but from a market viewpoint, these were very short and shallow um, down move, sort of like when we call the uh, long-term capital markets, which was interfered with, but we called it perfectly, but the markets did not react as people would have expected. So going forward, um, briefly, this again, we're just talking principles. Um, the, the key two principles that we're interested in is one, what's happening with the total solar eclipse in Taurus, uh, which is a money sign. A lot of I can give you lots of possible things what it could be. Secondarily, the Jupiter square, Saturn, there's a couple of small dates, August 19th, December 4th, give or take a few days, depending on other planets where the markets may be challenged. And the more serious one for me, which is 19, excuse me, 2025, 26, which is Saturn, Neptune. And the two examples of that I like to give one, of course, is the fall of the Iron Curtain. It's a rock on a cloud. And if any of you know uh, the gold markets and the Briex scandal, we got all our clients in advantage out of Briex two weeks in advance. Briex was a company that went from about five cents to several hundred dollars, was a total fraud, went down to zero <laughs> in a few days, and basically caused the total change uh, to the gold markets and how they're traded. And that's something to obviously be considered next year. And obviously, uh, governments are going to try to avoid this for the election cycle. So we have this, they'll be conjunct. This is something I wrote uh, for a, a magazine uh, of optimists. And it's basically about the, the, we're not giving this in the markets. It's basically, this is a major opportunity to set every, revolutionary goals. Uh, the best example I use is the July 1929, which is when we went to Apollo 11, which was when we went to the moon. Now, isn't it interesting? We haven't been back to the moon till we, the Jupiter-Saturn time frame in, Uran, in, in Aquarius. Why didn't we do it 20 years before? 
Why are we doing it now? And there are astrological, I think, reasons. And but but for the point of them, it wasn't it was Apollo eleven, not Apollo one, not Apollo two, not Apollo three. It's a good time to be setting goals, as we say, to reach for the moon. Into astrology, we like to put that in when it's not my own work. In the times of India, uh, basically, they were very bullish. They thought we'd go up to eighty thousand. It was a record year, went to about 72, but I consider that correct. It's very hard to get time and price, but nobody down here really lost money. You only made money following it. Uh, and of course, they seem 2024 is they see it as relatively positive. And there are certainly some positive, but in my opinion, negative factors as well. Chinese astrology, basically, and remember. I used to deal with people who didn't believe in astrology, but were interested in astrology only because it ruled money flows. And clearly in China, in India, in Japan, many at Burma, it does Thailand, it does move markets. And so eclipses in certain cycles will affect people buying and selling, as well as numerology, of course. Technical analysis, those of you who know it, know it, but it's a very critical part. If you're trading, you must do it. I was an early MT, a uh, person when everyone thought it was voodoo. So looking at the markets, we have to think it from a physical viewpoint besides the astrology, because we're beginning to run out of time and I want to take questions. There are four big known unknowns, whether the feds will lower rates or be higher for longer. We were correct last year. We think the market was wrong and that they were wrong. We think they're wrong again because inflation is stickiness. Anyone who goes to a supermarket knows the numbers are not quite correct. So we don't think they'll do it in March, but we do think given the eclipse, they may do it in May. It's one of three reasons uh, that might be a positive move uh, for the markets. A cessation or an increase in the Ukraine and Israeli wars will be affecting the brick dollar alternatives obviously extremely important and affects all commodities. And of course, the US presidential election is another factor. We could talk, this is not as important, but there are clearly a number of market risks. There are always market risks, uh, but uh, if we were looking at this purely from a fundamental viewpoint, we, people would not be buying markets, they'd be selling it, but that's not how they look at it. But where there's, Crises, and we know the pictogram and the word crisis in Chinese uh, represents danger and opportunity. There are market opportunities and the four that we like, and there are many more. Again, you should go back to our uh, seminar, and that's the last time I'm going to say this if you want to know in some detail. We're patiently bullish on gold. We believe that by the May or June, it will be much more popular. Stress and distressed assets are doing very well. M&A does very well. You, there are U.S. presidential elections and winners. Remember, the companies that win last time are not winners always. And of course, our, we need hard asset inflation and some secure dividends. Uh, the positives coming in the second quarter, there's positive astrology with that Jupiter Uranus. There's a U.S. presidential election. Obviously, there's a lot of money that's going out there. There's a lot of cash on the sidelines, but it may not go into the market. And when the Fed starts cutting, which I tend to think will be May and September, but that's not something I know for sure. But I don't think it, I know for sure it shouldn't be March. Whether it is or not, I can't say, because I always like to say, I always know what the Fed should do, but I don't always know what they will do. So we look at investment risks and we use astrology for this country risks, for example, extremely important. Astrology is very helpful for that. Technology risk, market risk, astrology is very important for that. And distressed investing is a good place to be. So one of our big forecasts is on Canada. Previously, if you looked at the horoscope of China, you would know it was very successful. By the way, it's not as bad as most people think now. It will be getting better. India was a slam dunk, so we changed our focus. We're not going to talk about the fundamentals here, which obviously are important. We are talking about um, the astrology of China, the astrology of India, and of course, Canada's horoscope now is very positive. So we're focused on that. So it's a, we can use that. And again, the market you're in affects it. Most people say that 50% of 
market action of what happens to a stock is due to the overall market action. 25% is due to the sector and only 25% is due to the individual stock. So 75% is due to the overall markets and have nothing to do with the individual stock or little to do. Okay, the five forecasts, if you don't wanna do it, we gave gold, which we're positive on and uh, selectively, uh, there are a lot of uh, gold stocks. We're positive on Canada. We are bearish at this time and we just went short again. Uh, but we have to be careful. We may be going long short. Uh, if we go down, we'll be buying. If not, we'll just be long short. We like to buy commodities on weakness. For the last week, buying oil is a no-brainer. Anyone who thinks oil is going up with what's happening in the Middle East uh, needs to have their head examined. But given the way computers are, you have to take profits quickly or trade it appropriately. I gave my Desert Island pick, which is company we liked very much, which was we gave it last year that if you had to go away for two years and come back and not think about the market, it was Max Silver, and we give the reasons why. And then last year, we gave one company in a positive market that went up uh, 300, no, 500 percent in about two weeks, and then, of course, went down again and then up again. And so this time, I gave a selection of five that you could look at um, as a bunch or any one, but high, high risk. And currently they're down, but this is a trade for the year. So you can see that in detail. When is a good time to invest in gold and silver? I think any good time, but from our viewpoint on any uh, weakness near uh, support levels. And the value of gold, which keeps rising, is a little expensive now. It's just almost 2000 As it gets to 2100 I think the public will come in. We break it up as a commodity, currency, inflation, metal, and crisis. We've talked about this the past many times. Silver is, is probably more undervalued, although it has more challenges, because silver is basically an economic metal, and we're basically in a recession, whether the government wants to recognize it or not, or whether they want to postpone it. Literally, these are just bad statistics. So I'll give an example of how we put something together with both astrology. So we're asked, because we're very famous in the uh, as gold investors. I'm a Leo, so obviously I like gold. My wife is a Cancer. She likes silver. Go figure. Anyway, so first is, of course, we have it by May, June based on astrological factors. We believe the Fed will signal lower rates by either March or April. Actually, March or May. I think it's more likely May, but it could be March. It would be a wrong move, but it could happen. And that, because of the interesting thing, is that every time there's inflation, the computers are selling gold. Yet every gold investor buys gold in a disconnect because of inflation. It's a long story. We'd have to talk about it. But in any case, this is a factor. The positive astro, as 2000 becomes a floor, people think 2200, 2300, 2500 or higher. There's damage to the US dollar with brick competition. More money, it's going to take time, is going direct. Now, between Iran and Russia, for example, is going, avoiding the dollar. Some of the money from India is going. That means less desire for the dollar, means the dollar is weaker, means that gold and other commodities which will rate be raised. Obviously, a gold stable coin uh, will do well if and when the World Council is working on it. Geopolitical crises, such as what's going on now, is positive for gold. Unfortunately, we don't, want, we don't like it, but it's a fact. So those are how we put it together and why we buy gold on weakness at technical points and been very successful. So we're going to come to, again, give you some takeaways because we've taken about half of the time I wanted to spend, 45 minutes. Again, astrology is a dual specialty. And there are ways you can use astrology without knowing any of this by working with traders, by looking at your own horoscope. There are dozens of ways you can work with it. But if you actually want to be a financial astrologer, you've got to study it and understand it. It's not a perfect tool. We strive for perfection, but it's not. It's pattern analysis. You can use cycles and or individual horoscopes. And if you want to be an investor, you should look at fundamentals and astrology. If you want to be a trader, you want to be technicals and astrology. So that's our forecast, which you've mostly have all looked at. And our slogans, which we like to say is, in trading, we like to be there first. And in investing, we always give a stellar performance. And again, we're going to be doing another forecast a complimentary on March 21st, because we're not sure if the markets will be down. We believe they should be, but that doesn't mean anything. And it doesn't matter, right or wrong. You have to make a decision. When I was 
for the first 10, 15 years, I just wanted to be right. I didn't care about making money. But for some strange funny reason, when I became a professional for other people, they were more interested in making money in the markets and they didn't care what the market, what the cause was, they wanted the results. So we tend to now be more concerned with making money right or wrong. And there are lots of people I know who are professional who have no idea when they wake up in the morning what the markets are going to do and they're consistently profitable. Okay. Uh, we don't need any of that. I think it's time for questions. So Wonderful. All right. While you were talking, we had one question that I held on to because, but I think, I think it fits in good here at the end. Um, Isis asked, "Can a combination of astrology plus tarot help more with accuracy?" Well, first of all, it depends how good an astrologer you are and how good you are with tarot. In my mind, since I was a math major, in fact, I was a math prodigy. I consider astrology a, a study in mathematics. On the other hand, I know many people who are psychically gifted, who use the horoscope as a mandala, and who get very accurate information doing so. Although I tend to think that it, it tends to be on and off more, because when you're psychic, you can't always call on it, whereas you can basically computerize elements of astrology. When it comes to tarot, if you're a good tarot reader, which is basically channeling your psychic energies and abilities, it can be helpful. I mean, anything can be helpful. There are many things I do that don't need astrology. I can look at, uh, being a Leo, I can look at a gold market, see where it is in a few minutes, and 20 minutes later tell you where it will be most of the time without looking at a horoscope, without looking at a technical chart, because I'm in tune with it. I have very good synastry with the uh, gold horoscopes. So... If it works for you and it's consistent, yes, but um, I tend to think uh, you would get better results the other way. But, you know, there are many ways to skin a cat. There are many ways to do markets and people who are traders or investors. You generally don't do the whole market. Many people specialize in two or three stocks, make a fortune, two or three commodities, et cetera. Whatever works for you on a consistent basis with good money management, which is much more important than even calling the market, fine. Right. Um, we have a hand. Uh, Liv, <laughs> yes, okay. go ahead and ask your question. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Let me see this if I can, because I think that's, if I can see the person, I don't know if I'll be able to. Da, 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 da. Oh, 28. Oh, we're just about to leave my sign of Leo. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> Interesting. Um, All right. Okay. Well, I don't see you, but it's okay. Go hey, uh, I appreciate it. I have, I have a question about because you just mentioned your sign of Leo and trading gold. What, I have a Taurus rising and I trade FX around eight-ish. I try to trade it around my rising. Would you say that that it would not be a good asset class? I've been trading it for three years now. Are you successful? Yeah. So why wouldn't I say it's a good asset if you see if it's successful? Oh, okay. No, I just figured if maybe there's something better, like that well, first of all, as, you, as every astrologer in the audience will tell you, it's not based on sun signs alone. You look at the sun, the ascendant, the midheaven. Yeah, I, have a, I think, I don't know, you all can probably see a chart at the moment. You look at the aspects. I mean, it's not one, it's, you, sun sign astrology is not sufficient. And I'm sure most of you know that sun sign astrology was developed in the 1920s by John Naylor primarily to sell um, newspapers. If you, if you read, a, I've many times mentioned, if you look at a textbook of the Middle Ages, Al Biruni's Elements of Astrology, thousand pages, one page is devoted to sun sign. That's it, out of a thousand pages. Now, one out of three people are very much like their sun sign, but one out of three are mixed, and some aren't, but depending. If you're like a, a Taurus with five planets in Aries, you're not going to be like a Taurus stellium. So it depends on the whole complex. But if you do something that works consistently, yes. I mean, basically, what people do when they don't do astrology is they try a bunch of markets until they find out what works for them. If you have some sinistry, then possibly, you know, you can short, short the circuit. But if it works for you and you have a system that works, by all means. Thank you. Sure. Um, we have a question from Carla. And I'll read it. And it looks like Nathan has thrown in some charts in the chat. Um, Carla's question was... See. Okay, because I, I can't see the charts, I'm afraid. Okay. 
her question is, did astrologers predict the 2008 real estate market crash? Of she course. says, I remember the movie, The Big Short. Yeah, of course they did. Some did. I don't remember who, but it was a piece of cake. And also it was a crash in the in the gold market. Absolutely. People called it, of course. But on the other hand, you know, there are people like Gene Dixon that make a thousand predictions. The question is how many predictions and with what accuracy, with what precision and what percentage? I mean, anybody, look, you don't need astrology to make predictions, but in my view, astrology is both a microscope and a telescope. In a microscope, it can be used in day-to-day -day trading. In a telescope, it could be used for two to five years or 20 years. However, the further out in time you go, the less precise it's likely to be. So yes, people always predict things, but you don't need to be an astrologer. I'll give a perfect example. I predicted both Mexican crises, I think it was in the 90s, six months in advance to the day. And I had a was telling this to a major stockbroker in, in uh, Florida at the time. And he said, big deal, Henry. I had several major rich Mexican uh, investors and they exited the market five days before. Obviously we know how they did it. <laughs> the point is there's more than one way and it depends on how far in advance you have how reliable it is, how accurate it is. But of course, that was, generally speaking, most major events will show up in a major way. Little ones can be, you know, astrology is not the only influence in the marketplace. There's fundamentals, there's technicals, there's manipulation, there's many things, uh, computers, AI, et cetera. But if it's a major event, the odds are there's a major, or at least I've found, uh, major uh, astrology to correspond to it. Now, whether you saw it in advance is a different story because we all know after the fact, it's much easier to predict than before the fact. Correct. All right. Um, Nathan, I see your hand up. Would you like to throw sure. in a question yeah. or a comment? Um, yes. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay. I see the microphone. Okay. Excellent. Hi, Henry. Thank you so much for this. This has been amazing. I've been taking notes. Um, yeah. So I was sort of like, to follow up with Carla's question, um, so what I, I mean, see, so for 2008 for me is like, like to me, it reminds me about Pluto changing into Capricorn. And I feel as though now that we're in a phase where Pluto's moving into Saturn's other um, other home sign, but this time with co-relation with Uranus, of course, I was wondering, are, are we, should we be worried about another like crash <laughs> and... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And um, also, I guess another question, or I don't know if I could ask two questions in one, but because you meant just to, just to piggyback off what you mentioned, yeah, the, do, you, do you find that astrology directly influences the markets or only indirectly via like world events like COVID and stuff? Yeah. Well, it's a big issue about whether astrology is causative or correlative. That's... Uh... Uh, something that's not quite uh, established, um, you know, whether it's causative or not. It's very hard to imagine, uh, certainly using modern physics, even quantum physics, uh, having mechanisms. For example, if you if you if we can see your mother's death in your horoscope, well, what is the correlation there? I mean, what what's the physical mechanism? It's very hard to imagine that. However, I, I would say the answer is both to your question. Uh, there are times that there's direct influences on the stock or the stock market or a situation. And there are times that um, there are outside forces. You know, for example, most a lot of oil stocks did very well with oil going up now recently because of what happened to, in, in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. But that how was that reflected in the horoscope of every energy company? Etc. So the, it's complex. Remember, if, if this was all a very simple one, two, three situation, everybody would be rich, have Rolls Royces, private jets, uh, mm -hmm. yachts. So it's not that simple an issue. You have to basically try to find a few nuggets that work for you, that give you an edge, and that's basically reliable, and then you'll make more money with less risk. So we can't really say that during any one of these upcoming Pluto ingresses that 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 will that, that we can predict a, a crash <laughs> well i think first of all i'd give you two answers to that i would if i were you i'd go back in history and there are books that have done this you can look up and see every pluto ingress and see what happened and see to what extent that's the case yeah. um 
But for example, let's take my two forecasts last year. They, in a sense, they were for drops. I wouldn't say crash because the market's too protected since 1987 uh, with the plunge protection scheme. But you know, we had a 911 event. We had a uh, an event um, with the bank's failures. And if I told you that at the beginning of the year, and we did, we hinted at it so people would know. Wouldn't you assume the markets were down? They weren't. No, you had a short-term trade for a few pennies, but not what should have been, because again, there are other forces in the marketplace. There's increasing interference. If you're dealing with a, a simple situation that's not manipulated, then yes. But anyway, you can t you have to use your own judgment. I wouldn't base it on one factor. In any case, it's a combination of factors, and partially the fact that we're very overpriced and we may go down this quarter, then we have an election coming. But with that Saturn-Neptune, I think it's more serious that uh, there can be recognized a recession in difficult times. Thank you. Um, we've got a chat and we've got two hands. So I'm gonna do the chat real quick here. It says, um, when, you, when you say you see your mother's death in a chart- As an I example. Yes, I do not think all people born a day and an hour and a time have their parents die at the same time. I believe the situation deepens on every person's relationship with their mother, which is more personal. Would you agree? Yes and no. It's clear when you do astrological twins that people may have identical lives or may not. Astrology is not the only influence in someone's life. You have pre-birth factors such as heredity, uh, and if you like previous lives, and you have afterbirth factors such as environment. Um, and additionally, quite frankly, if you do, if we were doing real astrology, which nobody does, then you could distinguish as the Hindus do between every few seconds, that even five seconds apart is a whole different life pattern. But I'd agree that no, there's no human being that could do it, but I'm giving an example, and certainly we've all seen cases of death and calling it from a horoscope. I'm not saying we do this. Uh, you know, if I know someone's very sick and I see certain aspects, I'm more inclined to have that view. And I don't predict death per se. I'm not working for an insurance company. But um, I was giving it as an example. I'll give another example. You're thinking this. I used to give, think about Hiroshima. Was it in everybody's horoscope that 100,000 people would die that day? Now, I believe it was in the horoscope of Hiroshima. I think it was in the horoscope of people who were away from the city that day. But was it in every... No, because there's the theory of what's called subsumption, which is basically we were under the other influences. I'm under the horoscope of the New York. I'm under the horoscope of the United States. I'm under the horoscope of the Axis. And I'm under other horoscopes as well. This is not just one thing happening. And you're only looking at the natal horoscope. There are multiple horoscopes. Um, but no, I, no one's going to do that in fact, but, but I'm giving an example that these are not mechanisms that we can explain. Quantum physics gives us a little bit better because it's not uh, mechanistic. Uh, and we don't have arguments like the stars are so far away, how can they influence us? But we still don't really have the energy sciences that could really explain this to make it work or to correlate it with why it's a clock. So, but I agree. I mean, I'm not saying that it's 100%, but I'm trying to give an example uh, uh, that we tend to think of this as causative. And, you know, yes, on a full moon, people are more agitated because under full moons, uh, the electromagnetic potential of the body is more agitated. People drink more, et cetera. Uh, people become enlightened like the Buddha, but it's not a fully explained and understood situation, at least by me. Okay. Uh, Marina. You've been waiting patiently with your hand up. That's okay. No worries to wait. I'm happy to wait. Thank you so much, by the way, Henry, for this. This was a, a great presentation just to say. And also, I have a question regarding uh, digital currencies. So because we don't really have like a really long history of tracking <laughs> digital currencies, I don't know if you've been able to make forecasts. I'm assuming you have. I've made, um, if you look yeah. at my earlier things, we called previous to, to till two days ago, we had nine major shorts on that and we were right eight times dramatically wow and we did we did that um i don't like crypto for a number of reasons so but 
that doesn't mean you can't make a fortune trading it long or short, but it was very easy. If you look at the horoscope of, of uh, Thursday, that was going to go down for the next two days. That was, we suggested shorting it at 48K. I think we're about 43K. Wow. So that's our, that's our 10th prediction, nine of which were perfect. Wow. So anyway, but yes, there are different horoscopes um, you can use, but it's again, not a perfect tool. And it, in my case, I use it with technical analysis as well to know well, where and when. Specifically, I was wondering about like, you know, governments are trying to bring in their own digital currencies. That's the one I'm kind of like, they're pushing it on like entire yeah. nations. How do you feel about those? Well, now we're not, we're going outside the realm of astrology and asking right. me what my, my political views are. Uh, obviously it's dangerous because governments can then simply take away if they find you with unpopular views, they can do what they do in China uh, and have a social credit score that will affect you more than your financial credit score. It's a very dangerous thing. On the other hand, uh, it does seem like it's coming. The only question is what, what um, safeguards will be there. Unfortunately, I think it's going to come. I do hope it doesn't eliminate physical cash, but uh, it, it's part of the world. It's just like being surveyed when you're crossing the street. You know, is there privacy? Or as some people say, there is no privacy, get over it. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's a difficult question. Uh, obviously, they want it because it's total control. Mm -hmm. But I think it obviously uh, has great, great, grave potential negative aspects, as well as some positive. I, I agree. Thank you for answering the question. Um, is that something that you actually can track with astrology or can make predictions with astrology since it's new? Are we talking about Bitcoin or are we talking about the government? The numbers? government. The government. Why not? How can I do it when there's no birth chart? Well, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> when there's a birth, what you would have potentially, and I don't do this work, is an inception chart. And okay. I've done that a little bit with companies, but then I tend to think they're, I believe they're outdated, but I haven't done real research on that. Um, you know, it's really hard to say when conception was. Now, with artificial insemination, it could be done and checked, but I haven't seen work on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank and you so, so much. so with this, it, it, it's easier when it happens. That's why in political astrology, I tend to use countries like Germany, uh, China, uh, Japan, rather than the U.S. and Britain, for example, which there's arguments about which horoscope to use. You can see five different horoscopes for the United States. You yeah. can see a dozen for England. When, you, when you're talking about Japan or Israel or any of the new countries, it's easy because we know exactly to the minute. So it's, it's much, I don't have to worry about rectification. Okay. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Sure. Hey, right. uh, thank you again. Uh, I just have one question sure. uh, that popped in my mind. So I used to, for fun, I'd just look up charts of people in history and then um, I'd try to figure them out. Um, I had a friend who knows a lot more history than me and he would throw me charts and then I'd try to delineate it. Um, and while you were, answering that bitcoin question it came across my mind have you ever like um i'll just use argentina as an existence uh, as an example did you like look up the the new elected no i haven't i used to go to argentina a lot i love argentina uh, i do tango and uh I, i've done there for gold and of course uh i also drink wine i'm a wine writer so i love malbec so i love argentina i do have their charts but it's like not significant I'm for okay. me, because it's a lot of work and nobody's paying me. I'm very, very expensive okay. at this stage of the game. And I don't have the time. If he came to me, and I might do that. But you, you've got to be putting a few million dollars. Or you're not going to be able to afford my fees. But okay. it can be done. You have charts and you do the time that he became inaugurated. And it's an interesting situation. It's giving people hope. We are okay. dealing with a couple of companies uh, in the mining space and perhaps in the wine space coming up. And they'll be highly affected uh, by that chart. There's a number of Israeli companies we looked at a little bit because some of the technology companies and healthcare companies come from there and that's affecting them short term. Yes, it can be done, but you know, this. it takes a lot of time. I'm a human being and I'm a small shop. Okay, thank you.
Great. Um, Nathan, I see your hand, but I'm going to ask Carla first because she hasn't asked a question. Go ahead, okay. Carla. And then we'll just take about another five or 10 minutes. And I've okay. run off. Okay. So whoever's okay, I'm giving you questions now, we'll close it with all their questions and then stop. Okay, go on. Okay, I was just curious. I, I went to a like stock market training class once and they were using something called with candlesticks and hammers yes. or something like that. Yes. Now, do you use that or other things? No, but candlesticks are, the candlesticks are the Japanese, one of the Japanese technical systems. It's valid. It, 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 there are many, many systems of, technical analysis, just like there are many systems of astrology. I'm sure the way you do astrology is different than the way I do it. And if you were trained in London, it would be different. If you were trained in Germany, it would be different. If you were trained in uh, India or China, it would be different. Um, so it is a very well-known and fairly accurate way to predict markets, but by itself, it's not sufficient, but it's very helpful, of course. It could be one of the ways you could do it. But the problem is, remember, all the easy, low-hanging fruit is, is already known. It, it, they used to be much more effective 30, 40 years ago when nobody used it, and they thought it was voodoo, that people were making a killing. Now you have computers figure out the patterns, you have people know what people are doing, and they play around it. So it's a very different game in the 21st century than it was in the 20th, but it definitely has significance, because it does show the money flows in buying and selling in a graphic way. Nathan, our last question. Yeah, I think that's actually a perfect segue to my question because so I was wondering, so there's a lot of software out there for technical analysis. Do you know of any software that combines astrological transits and technical analysis and the, the, the markets? Yeah, and they are, but I, 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 I'm sure it can be helpful. But remember, how rich are they? Now, let, let, me, let me be something. Most people expect to have all the answers. You're not going to have all the answers, so forget it. When you're studying something, you want to know what works and what doesn't work. Charles, no, it was uh, uh, Rob Hand who used to say that one of the advantages of financial astrology was you'd be able to test out techniques in a very quick way, whether the market's up or down. If I'm a genealogical astrology and I'm predicting you're going to be married in three years, we've got to wait three years to find out if I'm right, or I'm going to say you're going to be fired in 17 years, it's, you know, whereas in the market, I can make predictions every day. We can test out techniques. If anybody has really good techniques, believe me, they're not giving it to you. Now, that is not to say that they may start it. And, and then once they develop the techniques and you, that doesn't mean they can't be very helpful to you and give you added information you can make money on, but don't expect everything to just work out perfectly. Because if it was, the, why would they give it to you? They just run it themselves. That doesn't mean they can't be an add-on to you and astrology can be an add-on to many and it is an add-on both newsletter writers and computers are add-ons to many traders not not the majority but certainly thousands or hundreds anyway so uh yes but there's none that i use we use our own system because we were had our own school and i was a professional astrologer for 20 years and we had our own style of doing things and i did research and found certain things that made me money and that's it I don't try to predict everything. I always like to say I can predict about 25 to 30 percent of market surprises, and doing that can make you a lot of money. I can't oh. predict 100 percent. I'm surprised by markets too, but much less than most professionals. Oh, totally. Just, yes. What's your edge? It's what's your edge. What do you know that someone else doesn't know, or what do you know earlier than somebody else? That's the game. Yeah. From my experience, the vast majority of my friends who do trading do not, not only do they not do astrology, they don't even, they think astrology is fake. So I feel as though believing in astrology can give us an edge. Or at least, at least that's been my experience. I don't know if your experience has been different where you found a lot of people who are, who believe in it in this field. <laughs> well, I tend to be, since I was in Exodus and had a school and I'm well known and I have what, 20,000 people who know me and I had a textbook, which is now out of print. And I have other things. So I, I know a lot of people that do astrology that most people don't know do astrology, but I'm a, it's a whole other discussion. But um, it doesn't matter. I don't care if they don't do it. I'm not there to, I'm not their mother. I'm not trying to make them money. <laughs> Basically, you wanted to make money for my clients and myself. That's it. Yeah. This is again, not about, it's about making more money with less risk. If he wants to take more risk, don't use astrology. I don't care. It's no skin off my back. 
Uh, so I, I get it. There, there's a lot of closeted astrologers in this field, huh? <laughs> uh, well, yes, there's a fair number, um, but it's not, you know, what is it, maybe $50 billion worth of money? It's not trillions. We used to identify about 20 or 30 in, 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 in the beginning of the century. I haven't tracked it recently. So it's got to be at least 50 billion or 100 billion, but that's nothing compared to the trillions out there. But they have an edge and why should, they don't care. Listen, the people that use it that are big players don't tell you, why do they want you to make money? They want to make money. This is not about, this is not about uh, anything but making more money with less risk. That's the yeah. game. And you mentioned your software. Do you sell uh, your software? Like, if, No, can we it's not my software. First of all, I use off-the-shelf stuff, but we we internally process it. We had done some neural network programs that we ran out of money after a few hundred thousand dollars. So, And then some people wanted it, and I wouldn't sell it to them because I make too much money from it. Um, no, I don't sell software. But, you know, you can use it. You don't have to know everything. You just got to know a few things reliably with and have good man, money management. And I'll give you... One thing that I think you'll find interesting, and I want to close with this. Like most astrologers, you'll always run into people in the markets who turn $10,000 into a million dollars. You've all run into that. Of course, by the time they get to you, they're selling their services because they don't have any money. So when I had a partner, when we were trying to set up the astrologers fund, I had a trading partner who was a very good astrologer, as well as a major trader. So we had took an exercise of turning 50,000 into 2 million in one year, which we did, by the way. Yeah. But the year after, my partner lost it all. I was screaming at him all the way. He wouldn't listen to me. at strong areas, by the way. And that's because money management is the most important thing. Choosing the right instrument, second most important, and then forecasting markets. So money management, if you constantly double up and double up, sooner or later, you're going to lose. You know when to take, you gotta know when to fold it. Choosing the right instrument is important. I used to, when I first started out, we were doing options and I would like double my money in two days and hold on to it and lose it. And my broker would always get out and double and was very happy to have my work. And when it came to forecasting markets, it's the least important thing. It's very important, obviously, but it's the least important way for making money. Money management, and there are books on that, choosing the right instrument for your view. I used to say, like, for example, I thought the market was going to drop 400 points, and I'd take an out-of-the-money put, and I'd hold it to the end as opposed to stupidly after doubling or tripling my money, get, taking it out or reducing, and then I'd lose money because I was off by a few days. Remember, the market is not designed to make you money. Design, the market is designed, in many cases, to take your money. It's the legal transfer of wealth from the lower and middle classes to the uber wealthy. Now that's not the only part of it. It's got many other roles as well, but most people think it's only to make you money. No, it's also to take your money, it's both. So money management, choose the right instruments, forecasting markets, and do what you know and be humble because nobody's perfect. Even this Leo is not perfect. Thank you very much. Catch the stuff we have on our web websites and do your research. And I uh, thank you all for attending.